Slinger, baby. All attitude. You ever hear of it? Slinging Sammy Baugh? I want to walk out in the yard and take a leak. I don't walk out in the yard and take a leak. That's a gunslinger. down the top 10 gunslingers of all time let's start by looking at the criteria you could just picture him in montana just throwing a football at a bear would always cuss like a sailor quit your bitching every gunslinger has got to have a bazooka for an arm fine qualities but we think a gunslinger is a guy who likes to go deep and keeps you on the edge of your seat it's only during the time when you've got that gunslinger that you feel alive you talk about championship courage he'll go off script you know, these guys that are dropping back and they got the ball out to the side and you don't know where it's going to go. He is going to be uh, unpredictable. Being a gunslinger are a good thing. No. You know it's going to end badly, but he tries it anyway. Uh, it's going to go bad. Oh, and it does. It drives you crazy. We're shooting ourselves in the foot. What is he thinking? Why doesn't we have... Why didn't he... Awful. He killed him in that game. Well, yeah, that's because he was a gunslinger. He's in the moment. There's some greatness to that, and there have been some letdowns because of that. You didn't think it could get any more ugly. Enough of the letdowns. It's time for the countdown. The number one gunslinger. Hmm. Who's number 10? I hope you don't have Joe Namath on there. Cool your jets. The number 10 gunslinger of all time, Joe Namath. Who doesn't love Joe Namath? Broadway Joe. Joe Willie Namath. Yeah, sure. You look at Joe Namath's stats, they were very good, his career stats. Through just as many touchdowns as interceptions. Well, you can't please any everybody. He may have been inconsistent, but numbers alone don't make him our number 10 gunslinger. I think he had a gunslinger swagger. Had nothing to do with uh, his arm. It had to do with uh, what he did in the bars at night. He was dating Aunt Margaret. He was dating Raquel Welch. Did things his own way. Fur coats on the sideline. Not only a sports icon, but cultural icon. The New York Jets, under the command of Lord Fu Manchu, Joe Namath, were in the Oakland Coliseum. Joe's gunslinger persona was enhanced by so Joe, the, the off-field entity. Okay. <laughs> It seems almost un-American to me for a bachelor not to, you know, go around uh, having a drink with a lady now and then. Some people don't like it. Look at that shot. You know, he was the prettiest passer that I've ever seen. He had as much ability as any quarterback that ever stepped on a football field. He lit us up. This was a guy who was all about throwing the football. I feel I can throw as well or better than anybody. Broke me in. My first stop for the Raiders, I had 10 balls caught on me by Don Maynard from Joe Namath. An injury to all-pro cornerback Kent McLuhan placed rookie George Atkinson against professional football's leading receiver Don Maynard. Atkinson got an instant education. That's why I could say he's a gunslinger. What an arm, what a rocket, what a passer. Namath was the first quarterback to pass for over 4,000 yards in a single season. His brilliant passing helped lead the Jets to a matchup with the heavily favored Colts in Super Bowl III. 18, 19 point underdog against the Baltimore Colts. And say you're gonna win? Well, yeah, that's because he was a gunslinger. Broadway Joe to guarantee. Well, I got some news for you, buddy. We're going to win the game. I guarantee it. We're going to win the game. I guarantee it. That's swagger. That's gunslinging. So the Jets are going to win. In fact, he doesn't even predict it. He says, I guarantee. The New York Jets are the world champion in a stunning upset. It was just, yes. 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 Oh, it was great. I know it's a hell of a loss for those folks who picked it the other way. Tina and Mary may love Joe Namath, but they were not the only people at Chase Stadium with at least a crush on him. Namath's swagger and pure guts made him our number 10 gunslinger. He could run. 
but he got his legs torn up. His career would have been magnificent if he had been healthy. He just wasn't. Joe was one of the best. The, pro the only problem Joe had was his legs. Maybe the gutsiest guy out on the field. This guy could barely walk, yet he went out there every day and played his heart out. I'm just uh, trying to get along, you know, just... Just trying to get by. Oh, my God. He was the man. Joe Willie. Love him. He's a gunslinger. Coming up, which shooting star shot the moon and made our list? He was the original gun. Let's take a look at some Super Bowl champion gunslingers who didn't quite make our list. Starting with Doug Williams, who threw four touchdowns in a single quarter. Lobs it up, he's got Clark at the goal line. He's got it, touchdown, Washington Redskins. Williams beat John Elway in Super Bowl XXII, but a decade later, Elway put it all on the line to win the first of his two Lombardi trophies. This one's for John. Ben Roethlisberger has thrown caution to the wind as he's passed Pittsburgh to two titles, but these three guys aren't classic gunslingers. I don't even know how Big Ben got the ball to San Antonio Holmes. They did all win the big one, as did the next gunslinger on our list. Hi, Mr. President. The number nine gunslinger of all time, Kurt Warner. Anybody who can work at a grocery store, stocking shelves one day and play in the Super Bowl the next, you got to call him a gunslinger. Kurt Warner is number nine on our list. Not bad for a quarterback who almost didn't get a shot in the NFL. Rams are Super Bowl bound. He has had the most unusual career I've ever seen. He goes from Scout Team Player of the Year in 1998 to the NFL Player of the Year in 1999. That is a 40. touchdown pass Number 40. for Kurt Warner. This shows you most people don't know how to judge a quarterback. They really don't. That shows you how many people don't know what they don't know. I never wrote him off. Have a good one. Just stay within yourself. We've got Trent Green down in the middle of the field. Kurt Warner checks in. Kurt Warner was the backup. He had no choice but to play him. We will rally around Kurt Warner and we'll play good football. What a pass by Kurt the first quarterback in NFL history with three touchdown passes in each of his first three starts. He has that year, the single greatest year that a quarterback has ever had. He doesn't look too bad. Quarterback? No, he looks pretty good. That year was the greatest single performance by any professional football player. Now in the 40 touchdown pass club, there's Dan Marino and there's Kurt Warner. Unbelievable. Especially when you say it was his first year. Warner back to throw. Rainbow's the far sideline and it is caught by Isaac Bruce. And they won't catch him today. The St. Louis Rams are the world champions. Good coach. I love you too. To the team. <laughs> you are special. He's had a great career as a gunslinger. I've always had mixed emotions about Kurt Warner's career. What an awful decision. Wow. The situations he's been in have made Kurt to be a gunslinger. Bruce goes in motion to the right side. Warner pumps for him. Has him at the goal line. Touchdown. He's always had great receivers, but they're Torrey Holt. Torrey Holt. Touchdown, Rams. Isaac Bruce. Touchdown, Isaac Bruce. Now Larry Fitzgerald. He's in double coverage. It doesn't matter. He caught it anyway. Anquan Bolden. Make a five-yard throw and let the quad run the football. You like to think that somebody could have thrown you in any offense and you would have had just as much success. Oh, what a throw by Graybeard, Kurt Warner. He's been incredibly blessed for having great receivers, but they've been incredibly blessed for being able to play with a quarterback like him. Going to throw a fade right side, Fitzgerald, he got it! Maybe he's the number one gunslinger in this era, without question. He loves that uh, idea of being a gunslinger. And he fits the gunslinger mode, but just how he walks and carries himself. Greybeard says, I'm just gonna chuck this thing. You know, he kind of walks around like he just got off a horse. He's kind of got this gait to him, kind of a western cowboy. And like any good cowboy, once he fell off his horse, he got right back on and rode again. When nobody else believed in me, you guys did, and we're going to the Super Bowl! The Cardinals have shocked the world! It wasn't like he took the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team with a great history, to the Super Bowl. He took the Arizona Cardinals. 
but he may as well have taken Slippery Rock College to the Super Bowl because they weren't going to get there either. He's got the three most prolific passing games in the history of the Super Bowl. You've got to be kidding me! I mean, he's pretty damn amazing. So I think he's totally deserves to be on this list, maybe even higher. The number eight gunslinger of all time, Warren Moon. Warren Moon, I don't, I don't see as much as a gunslinger. Warren Moon has to be considered in that list. Yeah, no. Just in the terms that I look at it, you know, as a gunslinger, no. I think that's right about where he belongs. There's a guy through for 35 miles over the course of his career. It's a career that spanned over 20 years and two different leagues. He's thrown for more yards as a professional football player than any quarterback. Moon back to pass. Throwing for it. Tony Jones. No one will ever understand how great this guy was. I think the legend just grew. He was pretty much screwed in coming to the National Football League. Warren Moon was a guy that had to go to Canada to win five straight Grey Cups before he got a chance to play. Warren looks and loves it, got it complete. The time that he had to spend in the Canadian Football League were kind of wasted years. When he came in, there were a lot of coaches, scouts, general managers who thought, you can't play quarterback in this league. We'll make you a wide receiver. I don't want you to think I can play this position. <laughs> Guys, we're going to switch the brother to the receiver. <laughs> and it was just pretty much a foregone conclusion that quarterback was not in my future in the National Football League. But changing positions was. He was rowing upstream for a long time before finally he had people in his boat rowing in the same direction. His first three years, the Oilers, they were terrible. That's stupid football. I don't want them hit. So the time they got good in 1987, he'd already played eight years of professional football. Brennan Shute made him a gunslinger, compiled all kinds of guard statistics. The Houston Oilers have finally found an offense for Warren Moon. Go! It's called the run and shoot. The run and shoot offense with Warren Moon just slinging the ball all over the place. Moon can gun down his high-flying receivers from anywhere on the field. And he always seems to be quick on the draw. Their offense was as prolific as any in the NFL. Moon to throw for the shotgun. Deep down the middle for Jeffrey. He's got the 30. He is going to score! There might not have been a better, pure passer than Warren Moon. Moon, looking deep down the middle, has the man, touchdown! Oh, so Warren Moon threw as pretty a pass as you'll ever see. Another perfect pass by Warren Moon. Warren Moon had the spiral that just screwed right into a receiver's hands. You don't see many guys bobbling his pass. Back goes Warren Moon. Oh, like wow, could he throw the football. He had a game in 1990 in Kansas City in the rain, in the cold, in which he threw for the second most yards in history. Some days you wake up and it's just your day. Warren Moon came out and threw the ball for 585 yards or something against us. Back to pass, Moon looks right, looks left. He's hit. He breaks the tackle, goes down the middle, caught on a lead by Jeffrey. I was broadcasting that game. It was amazing how well he did. The fact was, I looked on defense for Kansas City. They had six guys of the 11 people out there that have gone to the Pro Bowl. I haven't seen a performance like this in a long, long time. And believe me, this is against a pretty good team. I called Sid Gilman, and he watched that game, and he told me it was the greatest performance he'd ever seen a quarterback have. That's why he's in the Hall of Fame. He was one of the great passers ever. And I think he deserves a place in our top ten. Coming up, not everyone's happy about the list. Yeah, they got... So far, our countdown of the top ten gunslingers has had few surprises. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. If that continues, you know, that's going to be great. Sorry, Terry. Some might find the fact that you don't fit the mold a bit jaw-dropping. Joe Montana's not on that list? Huh? How could Joe Montana not be on that list? How could Johnny Unites not be on that list? Sorry, Fran. No Johnny you and no you. Where do I fit that? I don't fit in the top ten of that? Did I set all the passing records? I think Tarkington has to be in there. Did I have the most touchdown passes, the most completions, the most yards gained, and I'm still in the probably the top five of all those categories? Who put up that list? That's a bogus list. Give me a break. Give me a break. Holy cow. The number seven gunslinger of all time, Daryl LaMonica. Seven is Daryl LaMonica. Why? Gunslinger. Daryl LaMonica? Next. Daryl LaMonica is on the list of the top ten gunslingers? 
Holy cow! That shows you how many people don't know what they don't know. Yes, he was a gunslinger. He could throw it, and he could sling it. I love Daryl LaMonica. He was awesome. In the 60s and early 70s, Daryl LaMonica earned his reputation as our number seven gunslinger. But his nickname is second to none. Daryl LaMonica was the Mad Bomber. The Mad Bomber. He was a Mad Bomber. The 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 Mad Bomber. Fit him perfectly. Great nickname. The meticulously designed Oakland offense then began its precision bombing of Boston's defense. Gunslinger, for sure. He had been honed in Buffalo uh, behind Jack Kemp. Daryl LaMonica, a rookie from Notre Dame, has replaced the injured Jack Kemp. Buffalo Trail. Whoops, they did. And after four seasons, Buffalo defused the Mad Bomber. Darrell was clearly a guy that wanted to throw the ball. He was traded to the Raiders. It was the perfect situation for them. Al Davis has always believed in the vertical offense. Al Davis was at his absolute innovative best at that point. Hey, look. He throws one for Melinda Kopp, a fine catch at the 15. He screamed at the 46-yard line of the chase. He was such a good fit for Al Davis that I think Al never got over Darrell Monica. Throw it anywhere, at any time. But he throws. Touchdown, Raiders. Don't be afraid to throw it. It was a different era. I mean, that kind of game would never work today unless you had Mike Martz as your coach. He loved it. He loved going deep. Daryl Monica was nuts. He loved to throw it long. It was fun to watch. Defenses would have to open up and respect the deep threat. Buffalo learned the hard way. If your name is the Mad Bomber, you pretty much have license to drop back seven steps and chuck that puppy up. First thing he would say, warm up him because we're getting ready to go deep. The first play, it was a bomb. The second play, a bomb. The third play, a bomb. Anything that was under like 25 yards was an insult to his arm. Oakland's receivers were tailor-made for LaMonica's talents. LaMonica would drop back, and so many times, he'd just throw it deep, and Wells would run under it. They had warm Wells, and Daryl LaMonica, forget about it. LaMonica's back. Hey, look, he's throwing deep for Wells. LaMonica won more than 78% of his games as a starter. Only Otto Graham has done better. But LaMonica's basic game plan fell apart as defenses became more complex. He just couldn't get it. Don't worry about that. You just run your back. Those zones drove him crazy. When he throw an interception, that's his weakness. <laughs> He didn't read the playwright in the defense. This maverick is hardly a unanimous choice for our number seven gunslinger of all time. Holy cow. Oh, my God. The number six gunslinger of all time, Jim Kelly. Well, literally, he was a gunslinger, right? He was, was he, or was he a Houston gambler? I don't know what. The Houston Gunslingers. Wasn't the team the Houston Gunslingers? The Houston Gamblers. Houston Gamblers, okay, okay. Jim Kelly's days in the USFL were not played as a gunslinger, but he finds himself sixth on our list, and there are some who think his days in the NFL weren't played as a gunslinger either. That offense just getting a little cayenne pepper on it. I love Jim Kelly, but no, he doesn't bore. Kelly so belongs on this list, so throw these there. I don't think you can say he's a gunslinger. Did you make a list of gunslinging QBs without Jim Kelly. Oh yeah, definitely. Where Kelly played had as much to do with his ranking as how he played. In Buffalo, the weather's obviously an issue, and it's a crazy, windy, nuts stadium. Good afternoon, everyone. From a windswept Ralph Wilson Stadium in Orchard Park, New York, the winds this afternoon at 40 to 50 miles per hour. No one prior to Jim Kelly could throw the ball in western New York <laughs> through that windy stadium. Kelly drifts to the right, throws long downfield, and it is... Jim was able to throw a really nice spiral to cut through the wind. This guy is just simply amazing. I don't know that we give him enough credit for what he was able to do in those poor conditions in Buffalo. Wow, what a game. Man, touchdown! You've got to have a rocket to get the ball downfield in December in Buffalo. Gunslinger, baby. Kelly was a, was a guy that loved the no-huddle offense, and the K-Gunners, it was called, 
Our number six gunslinger was at his best as the trigger man for the K-Gun. Touchdown, Andre Reid! I don't know if you're ever going to see anything quite like what Jim Kelly and the Bills had going at that time. They were one of the first teams to go spread, no huddle. In the no huddle offense, Kelly to throw again. He throws long this time, and it is... My goodness gracious, he had Lofton on one side, Andre Reid on the other. He loved to get Thurman Thomas involved in the passing game. And I know the Raiders can poo poo this no huddle off and saying that they've seen it before, but they've never seen it the way the Bills run it. Everybody used it in the two minute drill, the no huddle. But uh, Buffalo started to use it in the early parts of the game. Kelly goes back to throw, looks downfield, wants to go long, throws down there, Reid's got a touchdown! It was balls to the wall. I mean, they kept the accelerator down. What a great throw! He was perfect for this offense. Jim does everything quickly. If you've ever had a meal with Jim Kelly, he devours it in seconds. They just put the ball in his hands and say, Jim, work your magic. It's only during the time when you've got that gunslinger that you feel alive. The rest of your time as an NFL fan, you're kind of watching like this, you know, because you're like, oh, it's going to go bad. And it does. When Kelly was in a game for the Bills, I always believed we were going to win. I always believed we had a chance because he emanated that. That's a gunslinger. Coming up, which gunslinger could sling it like no other? He threw the prettiest ball. He's thrown for more yards. Before we continue our countdown of the top 10 gunslingers, here's a look at the list so far. Number 10, Joe Namath plays on and off the field. He's trying to get by. He's a gunslinger. Number 9. Most people don't know how to judge a quarterback. Kurt Warner surprises everyone. Number 40. For Kurt Warner. Look too bad. Quarterback. Number 8, Warren Moon writes the ship. He was rowing upstream for a long time before finally he had people in his boat rowing in the same direction. Number 7, Daryl LaMonica bombs away. If your name is the Mad Barber, you pretty much have license to chuck that puppy up. Number 6, Jim Kelly feasts on his opponents. What a great throw! If you've ever had a meal with Jim Kelly, he devours it in seconds. And now, the number 5 gunslinger of all time, Slayton Sammy Ball. He was the original gunslinger. Sammy Boa, I would call a gunslinger. He played like a gunslinger. He was confident. He loved putting the ball up in the air. And that was what he did so well, so effectively. From the late 30s to the early 50s, Sammy Baugh revolutionized the game of football, making the forward pass commonplace. And this helped make him our number five gunslinger. Slinging Sammy Baugh winds things up as he puts the game on ice with a special delivery to left die for the Eastern title. The ball was so big and oddly shaped at that time, but he had big hands. It enabled him to throw the ball where a lot of the quarterbacks couldn't throw it very accurately. But in 1945, he completed 70% of his passes, so if he was a gunslinger, he was a good one. He was from Texas, and he wore the big hat, so image-wise, it kind of was a fit. To this day, I don't like a big city. I would never be happy in a big city. I don't care if they'd give me the whole damn city, I wouldn't like it. Every highlight you see a Sammy Ball looks like a 65-yard touchdown pass. That would count as a gunslinger, I would think. Slinging Sammy Ball, voted the greatest living quarterback of all time by the Associated Press poll. Every time he throws a football, completes a pass, gains a yard, scores a touchdown, Ball sets a world record. I can't imagine what football would be like if it had Sammy Baugh in it today. I don't want to walk out in the yard and take a leak. I don't want to walk out in the yard and take a leak. Some agent and marketing person would have tried to refine him and polish him up. Get away, damn you. Get away. At that time, we didn't have any mask on or anything, you know. I told him not to block him, just let him come. Well, I threw the ball and hit him right there on the wet head gear, went across his forehead, and I guess it shut off the blood or something. And, Anyway, he, he stood there and then just fell flat on his... I thought I'd killed him. He said, I'd like to see one of these little SOBs today have to play like that. In 1943, Barr led the league in punting, 
and interceptions as a DB, but it was his arm and swagger which made him our number five gunslinger. You got to feel like you're the best son of a bitch that's out there. I mean, that is gunslinger right there. He might be one of the five greatest players in NFL history. The number four gunslinger of all time, Dan Fouts. Dan Fouts is a gunslinger. You're going to see his numbers and you go, oh, gunslinger. Dan Fouts was a gunslinger. Our number four top gunslinger of all time was a wild man with a wild beard. You could just picture him in Wyoming just throwing the football at a bear trying to knock the bear down. He probably could. Defenses had a bear of a time stopping Fouts as he was a master at running the innovative offense of Coach Don Coriel. Dan Fouts was the perfect quarterback for Don Coriel. On behalf of Air Coriel and your pilot, Dan Fouts, welcome to San Diego. Bone left, Leo on white. Ready? Air Coriel is phenomenal. He was at the forefront of changing the NFL with his passing game. The first thing in the Air Coriel offense is the bomb. We played the Chargers. That was one of the few games that I got up off the bench to watch the other team's offense play. Bounce the quarterback, fires up downfield, the touchdown! I think I understood you. Is, is that what you wanted, a yeah, touchdown? I, I <laughs> Dan Fouts, the classic gunslinger, made it all happen. Eric Coriel was as fun to watch as any offense there was. The most beautiful passing offense that we'd ever seen to that point. We still got time, oh! Picture a Chargers game and balls are in the air, right? No! Oh, the game plan was pass, pass, pass. He thought his arm was going to fall off. They weren't even going to try to run the ball. San Diego's lack of D often led to a lack of W's and no Super Bowls for Fouts. I didn't watch a whole lot of defense growing up in San Diego. <laughs> they would score 51, but other teams would score 52. <laughs> you can't win that way. Dan Fouts is a gunslinger because of his attitude Damn it. and swagger. Son of a out of here. That's off the record, fellas. He just had so much confidence. I look at a Dan Fouts and I see an incredibly confident quarterback. Gunslingers got to be fearless. They got to be leaders. Come on, run out of the brakes now. You run out of the brakes. I'm running out the brakes. Tippy toeing like a. You like a fire down the damn right here. I will. And you're out of here. You're out of here. I feel a little bit embarrassed looking back on it and hearing these stories about what a what a tough uh, means sob I might have been in the huddle at times. Oh, uh, quit your bitching. Our number four gunslinger threw for over 43,000 yards on his way to the Hall of Fame. It, it was just fun to watch. Numbers are right there. I mean, you look at the guy's career stats, they're pretty impressive. Dan Fouts was a great, great throw of the football. How about that? <laughs> Coming up, which gunslingers cracked the top three on... Let's look at some Hall of Fame gunslingers who didn't make our list. Cowboy icon Roger Staubach led Dallas to two Lombardi trophies, while his successor, Troy Aikman, added three more. Your Cowboys are still champions. Steve Young's Hall of Fame career culminated in him finally winning a Super Bowl in his 10th season. Another touchdown! take the monkey off my back, All three were a bit too clean cut to make our list, but our number three sure wasn't. The number three gunslinger of all time, Sonny Jurgensen. Sonny! Sonny Jurgensen. Gunslinger? Oh, yeah. Sonny was a beauty. Sonny Jurgensen's pretty passes from the early 60s to the mid 70s took him all the way to the Hall of Fame. Gunslinger. Sonny Jurgensen was marvelous. Not only was he a quintessential gunslinging quarterback, but he was maybe the best pure passer in the modern game. And now, let's watch the Philadelphia Eagles of 1961. Jurgensen has set a new Eagle record for touchdown passes. 
Sonny has now set a new NFL record for pass completions and passing yardage in a single season. Sonny was traded to Washington, where Redskins fans got a glimpse at a gunslinger who could riddle defenses with perfect bullets. Great passer of the football. I think of Sonny Jurgensen, and I think of 400-yard football games. It's a touchdown! Redskins touchdown! I've never seen anything like it! That was fantastic! He was accurate. He was so accurate. Accuracy. He could throw the ball accurately. He was such an accurate passer. Impossible to defend. This legendary gunslinger ran an offense masterminded by another quarterback icon. I think our attack, our passing attack, is very explosive because we have as good a passer as there is in the league. This is one of the records, and this is the man with the quickest release in football. Christian Adolph Sonny Jurgensen is a quarterback like none other. There has never been a man alive who can throw a football like Sonny Jurgensen. During the 60s, the golden boy with the golden arm was the Redskins' fun-loving Sonny Jurgensen. He didn't look like a real pro football player. He would waddle along with that pot belly, God bless him, and then shred defenses apart. Sonny Jurgensen was short and dumpy, and he looked like he should be selling donuts. The old pot-bellied stove himself, Sonny Jurgensen, came on to heat things up and throw a scare into the Bengals. He used to tell people that his belly was his handicap, that they made him be that heavy so that it would make things even. He had his little gut where he'd been drinking beer all the time. You give him a beer and have him throw the football in the other hand is a beautiful thing to watch. I've sat down and talked to people that played with him and people that played with him. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> One of the most entertaining people I've ever been around in my life. I think Sonny was a 24-hour-a-day quarterback. But he was always in charge wherever he was. And I said, Sonny, I can't tell you the stories I've heard about you. And he said, they're all true. Every one of them. You could picture him in the Wild West. Sonny Jurgensen, to me, was the epitome of a gunslinger. To have the title of gunslinger, it means you are one fearless SOB, and there's never been anybody last year quarterback than Sonny Jurgensen. Gunslinger of the highest order. I love Sonny. I loved him. The fun didn't end for him when the game ended. I don't know that the fun has ever ended for Sonny. Coming up, we reveal our top two gunslingers. That's what we're shooting for. Let's look at some gunslingers who couldn't win the big one and couldn't make our list. Boomer Esiason's Bengals had a lead late in Super Bowl 23, only to see it slip away. Donovan McNabb passed the Eagles to five NFC Championship games. Simply McNabbulous. But he's never won the Super Bowl, just like Drew Brees, whose record-setting numbers haven't even gotten him to the big game. Some gunslingers just can't seem to win it all. The number two gunslinger of all time, Dan Marino. Well, Dan Marino, I think he came out of the womb as a gunslinger. Came into this world throwing touchdown passes. Here's Marino. He's back. He's looking. Fires into the end zone. It's complete for a touchdown. Oh, he was he was John Wayne. I mean, he was. You talk about the ultimate gunslinger. God doesn't make guys that can throw the football like that every day. There's a certain throws he made that only he can make. Marino takes the snap. He's looking. Has time. Throws into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. Dan Marino was as close to a perfect passer as I've ever seen. Perfectly thrown pass by Dan Marino. In my mind, Marino was the best pure passer of all time. All those Miami Dolphin teams had one running the football with Larry Zonka, Jim Kick, and Mercury Morris. When Dan Marino showed up, they completely scrapped all of it. Let's get a drive going, man. Let's get a drive going and score some damn points. All the defensive coaches in the National Football League would have patted me on the back if I made him hand off and hand off and hand off. So we let Marino throw it on every down. All right, let's go, let's go. Play with some urgency now. A little urgency. Stand up. Steps out to the right side, throws into the end zone. Oh, it is caught. It's a touchdown. 
Never on the game with Marino. That's the thing I loved about Dan. Nothing safe with Dan Marino on the other sideline. 30 seconds to go. I believe Marino is saying I'm going to spike it. He's looking. He throws. Oh, no! Touchdown! Put the ball in Dan the man's hands. Let him go to work. Picasso. Appearance is everything when it comes to a gunslinger. And the way Marino carried himself earned him a spot on our list. Come on, now let's quit feeling sorry for himself. Let's do something. Marino played with tremendous arrogance. And I mean that as a compliment. Marino takes the snap. He's looking, throwing into the end zone. Oh, go Jim McDonald! And his ability to split coverage down the field and throw a ball through a hole that big 30 yards down the field is just about unmatched. Fires end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown! Great leaping catch! And he did a lot of it on pure instinct. A flame burns inside that man, Dan Marino. He just played football, almost like it was on the playground. Once he and I were exchanging, I said, well, now what are you looking at when the ball snapped? What are you looking at on your first read? When do you look to your alternate receiver? He says, look, I just look for the open man, and I'm going to hit him. One of Marino's gifts was his ability to see. And if he sensed the pressure coming, he had such a quick release that he would get rid of the ball accurately before the pressure got there. Man, oh man, was that one pretty. Marino may be number two on our list, but he has the quickest draw of any gunslinger. He is gone. He had the quickest release of any quarterback I've ever seen. Marino slogging in the mud, back to pass. He throws downfield. Marino would put the ball perfectly in their hands. Oh, touchdown! Yeah! The guy can put the ball where it needs to be faster than anybody has ever been able to, and it's going to take a lot for someone to ever challenge that quality about him. Cutting loose for Marino means slicing a defense with a lightning quick release. The ball was whistling. It was sizzling. It was like Nolan Ryan was on the football field. He could walk into a room in uh, in Shanghai, China, and people would go, I don't know who he is, but he's pretty special. They'd also probably know that he never won the big game. The debate down here was always Marino versus Montana, and it was statistics versus rings, and Marino could never win that argument. But Marino retired with nearly every passing record in the book. That's uncontested. Fans here recognize Dan Marino's career accomplishment. What a joy it has been to watch that man play football. Coming up, find out who the lucky quarterback is that not only tops our list, but the wish list of Miss America as well. You gotta admire him. <laughs> you. Sure. Before we reveal our number one gunslinger of all time, let's recap 10 through 2. He had as much ability as any quarterback that ever stepped on a football field. Broadway Joe okay, takes a bite out of the Big Apple. Okay. Number nine, Kurt Warner's second improbable journey. What a throw by Graybeard. He may as well take a Slippery Rock College to the Super Bowl. Number eight, Warren Moon's signature win. Sid Gilman told me it was the greatest performance he'd ever seen. Number seven, the Mad Bomber leaves no doubt. Gunslinger, for sure. Number six, Jim Kelly defies Mother Nature. No one prior to Jim Kelly could throw the ball in western New York. Number five, slinging Sammy Baugh takes a dip in immortality. He might be one of the five greatest players in NFL history. Number four, Dan Fouts puts the air in Coriel. Dan Fouts was a great, great throw of the football. Number three, Sonny. Sonny Jurgensen's everlasting charm. I don't know that the fun has ever ended for Sonny. Number two, Dan Marino, born to throw. Perfectly thrown pass by Dan Marino. I think he came out of the womb as a gunslinger. And now, the number one gunslinger of all time, Brett Barr. Favre. You gotta admire him. <laughs> You've gotta admire him. No one does it better than Brett Favre. Virtuoso performance by Brett Favre. To be a gunslinger, you have to look the part. Brett Favre looks the part of a gunslinger. What do you think Mike would do if he knew I had a dip right now? Yeah, man. Ice capades. 
Favre is beyond number one. I don't think there's a close number two. I think Brett Favre would be the guy that defines gunslinger. Brett Favre's place atop our list may have been expected, but our number one gunslinger is anything but predictable. He's kind of fun to have number four. He's a nuts, so. <laughs> Just if there's any consolation, I had him when he was really nuts. I'm going to wear those for you. I asked Marty if he'd let me call the plays in the dog. Brett Favre was an evil Knievel. High risk, high reward. When he gets on the field, all bets are off. Throw it away, throw it away, throw it away, throw it away. Oh, that very loose, that gunslinger style. I'm sure it caused Mike Holmgren to lose a lot more hair than he otherwise would have lost. Why does it we have, why didn't he? But at the same time, Brett Favre was able to pull it off. A lot of quarterbacks couldn't do it, but Brett Favre was able to do it. And if you look at his 400 and some touchdowns, you're going to see many of those were in tight spots. Many, high percentage of those were like, oh, just one inch away from getting knocked down or intercepted. Favre looking, now comes to the end zone, in traffic. Whoa. Oh, I don't know. Right between two defenders. He'll go off script and he'll throw it underhanded, or he'll throw it left-handed, or he'll throw it two-handed. He's going to find a way to do it. And it might be unorthodox, it might have some collateral damage at times, but sure enough, it's going to be exciting. He's hit, spins away, stumbling, rolling right, shovels it forward, he's got Donald Lee inside the five. The Gunslinger's a guy who's going to throw the ball where he probably shouldn't. And he's going to throw some balls where you go, no, no, no. Great, great, great throw. A prayer of a heave from Brett and the Jets score on 4th and 14. It's the classic no, 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 yes. That happened with Brett often. He flips it into oh. the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. That was the all-time no, no, yes, yes play. Ah, the touchdown. <laughs> Holy cow. Mike's over. Oh, oh, oh. Great play. Okay, okay. What am I supposed to say? That wasn't drawn up, believe me. That was one of those open a prayer. Sandlot plays, huh? Yep. Uh, I think I'm better that way. I'm pretty sure if you look it up in Webster's under Gunslinger, there's Brett Favre's face like right next to it. But the book that will define Favre is the record book, and he owns nearly every passing record in it, good and bad. There's a reason Favre has the most touchdowns of all time and the most interceptions of all time. Why would you pass the ball there? Unbelievable. It, it, it just, unbelievable. That's what he does. That's what he does. That's what he does. He just felt that he could throw the ball anywhere. If you didn't think it could get any more ugly, it is. I think Favre's a little overrated. For a great gunslinger, he shouldn't have that many negatives. Favre's got something. Oh, smoke. I mean, he's all over the joint here. Make the switch. Put in the, put in the other quarterback. Come on. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We all try to find something wrong with players, and someone will say, well, oh, gosh, the guy threw 310 career interceptions. No more rocket balls, please. Well, I was chained up. No, I know. Well, yeah, but he had 464 touchdowns. Brett Lucky drills the middle. He's got it. snowballs, Favre jumps into his offensive lineman's hands. All of that factors in to the media loving, loving Brett Favre. Give this guy a break. He's Brett Favre. There's only one Brett Favre. I got to see this. This Favre out here. Brett Favre. Look at Brett Favre coming off the field. He is so happy. It has been an absolute love fest. It's been a 20-year love fest. My God. Is it over? While that question may be eternal, ours seems a bit easier to answer. Despite all of the great quarterbacks we've seen and the qualities they share, what do you think Mike would do if he knew I had a dip right now? The consensus is that number four is number one on our list of gunslingers. You can probably guess who our number one gunslinger is. Number four? You are correct. Number four? <laughs> There's no question. Brett Favre is the absolute number one gunslinger that's ever played this game.